Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friend Sam Clinton and Courtney Trust. Y'all say hello. How's it going? Hey, John. Hey, guys. You know, we have always spoken, Sam, Courtney, we've talked about the labor markets. We talk about the Federal Reserve quite a bit. As everyone that listens to economic podcasts probably knows, the Fed has a dual mandate for price stability and full employment. And for a long period of time, it looked as though, gee whiz, economy just keeps on adding jobs and keeps on adding jobs, and there are just millions of jobs available. And so kind of letting people think maybe or kind of interpret the Fed's comments that perhaps since the labor market is so strong, that the Fed can just keep on raising the overnight lending target for as long as it wants, because that's how strong it is. And that's what we've talked about with the Fed is, you know, there's a lag to it. Yeah. Are they doing too much? It's kind of hard to tell on a, on a day-to-day basis. I mean, it's not like you hike rates one day and the next things are going to slow down and fall apart. But, you know, it, it's been kind of a trickle that we have seen. You know, it has been strong. It has allowed the Fed yeah. to do more. But has that lag just kind of not taken place yet or, or the effects of the lag not really taken place? And that's kind of the big question. Yeah, that we're starting to see, maybe. Well, the thing about it is, I mean, what is it? In 2020, we slashed all those jobs due to the pandemic, and then we've been adding them really ever since, I think, May of 2020. We've been adding millions of jobs to the economy. A lot of those are just replacing what we had. But even still, unemployment rate, Sam, if I'm not mistaken, 3.6 percent, something like that. And even more than that, up until February this year, in January, the government, Bureau of Labor Statistics, has announced that there were something like 10.5 10.5 million jobs available yeah. in the month before that there was 11 million jobs available and not to be too nerdy with the numbers but Courtney you know right. I'm, I'm kind of like yeah. that hey that's what you that's, do do that, what you do John hey I'm going to do what I do that's about <laughs> the that's about the population of North Carolina which yeah. is a rapidly growing state 11 million thereabouts however this week strange going up it dropped from 10.5 roughly in January down to I think 9.9 yeah. million or something on this one which is still, Courtney, that's still a huge number of job openings available in the economy, but that's a pretty huge one-month drop. So, I don't know. You tell me. I mean, is, are things starting to change? What do you all think? I, I think we're just still starting to see the impact of the most rapid tightening cycle over the last 50 years. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's, it, it, it's hard to understate how quickly they've gone, and we're really, you know, the tech jobs are the first one. That the frothiest stuff is typically the first to kind of get hit yeah. but after a while you know the impact of higher rates means less lending means all this other stuff that starts to impact more main street as well but i think in seeing the headlines that it's walmart and amazon that are cutting thousands of jobs and it's more of their distribution centers to me it would be indicative of people not buying as much online and you think about back to 2020 and it was profitable to some people in the sense that they were getting checks from the government as well as getting paid from their employers for those who didn't get laid off. Mm-hmm. But, so it, you had a fluff in your, you know, a fluff, a fluff, and uh, <laughs> all right, in your income that allowed people to buy more material cushion. things, cushion, yes, there thank you, you fluff, like cushion, fluff, whatever. whatever. Um, so yeah, so I think people bought more material. Plus, you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't necessarily have experiences, so you bought things, well, right? I, I think part of, ahead, I think part of it is the amount of demand, kind of what you're talking about, the right. amount of money that was flushed into the system, and then the investments that a lot of these companies made, both in equipment and in labor, right? Based on the assumption that that was going to continue forever, and 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 the consumer still is by my argument, pretty strong. However, it's clear that it's slowing down a lot. Well, and you talk about Amazon and some others right there. And Courtney, you're absolutely right. You know, consumer expenditures are still okay, but they're not as robust as they were. And so when you take a look at just how rapidly the consumer grew in 2021, 2022, these companies had to keep up with the demand at the time. So they hired all these people, hired all these people. You get back to more normalized growth levels, you're going to find out that you have a number of redundancies. Same thing happened with the tech sector, but now even more, we understand the consumer, we understand tech. What's going on with McDonald's? You know, what's going on with some of these other things? And Courtney sent us an article about... uh, McDonald's telling all the people to go work at home until we can figure out whether or not we're going to can you. So they can fire you over there. Over I'm just like, like, oh my gosh, what are you going to do working from home when you, I don't know. Well, I know I'm not going to be eating Big Macs if I <laughs> yeah. think I'm going to be on the on the chopping block. 
Well, and I, I think what's interesting too is that you would think that if they're letting go for Walmart, they let go or made a notice that they're letting go 2,000 uh, warehouse um, employees, and they recently came out to their investors talking about you know sales and profit that they plan to raise the average minimum wage from $12 to $14 an hour to retain store workers. So it kind of seems a little contradictory that you're trying to retain workers, but you're also letting 2,000 go. So it's like kind of to your, there must have been redundancies and they're like, to keep the ones that we want, we're going to need to pay them more. Well, again, I, th- I think it's flow. redundancies when those, they were making investments based on this egregious growth and yeah. egregious consumer demand yeah. that is not maintained over the last two plus years as, as you know people start to spend down their savings and what have you that then there becomes redundancies. It's like you may need two people to, to pack boxes when you're, you know, these crazy growth rates, crazy demand, and then as soon as it starts to come back to a more normal level, that starts to be a redundancy. I don't know. I mean, have y'all seen it when you go into a store that there just seems to be plenty of workers around that can help you? Because I will say my experience has not been that. Like, it, it seems that, especially the hourly workers, that it's still slowly getting better, but that it's an issue with not having enough workers. Which is the reason why McDonald's and others are announcing what they're doing. They're getting rid of sort of that mid-management, sort of second quartile type of income earner and going to be paying, you know, the hourly people, you want going from 12 to 14, because it is difficult to find those people come in. They are doing the gig economy work. Pew Research estimates that some three to five million Americans get their primary income from, a, from the gig economy, from an app, or even just underneath the table. So in order to get those unskilled or semi-skilled people back into the, um, into the McDonald's out- outlet, putting frozen chicken into boiling grease and things like that, you're going to have to pay them a little bit more these days. So money has to come from somewhere. So you can people over here so you can get these other people back back in doing sort of the low-end work. It's a balancing act. I mean, it, it, it's, it's trying to, to kind of triage, I guess, where where the holes are and, you know, that, I guess, the front lines, the, those 12 moving up to 14, what have you, those jobs, you kind of can't replace those. Or you can't. If you don't have those, you have bigger problems. You can maybe replace them down the line. But, you know, those mid-level managers that, you know, Twitter was a good example of that. Yeah. They they fired a lot of those kind of mid-level managers. But, yeah. you know, have you all not been to a McDonald's or Wendy's where they have the kiosk where you walk up and there's not someone sitting there taking your order, but you put your order in? So, I mean, like, and, and some of it is leveraging technology. I know we've talked about that before where you eliminate mm-hmm. somebody that was maybe an hourly worker and you just have the cooks in the back. Well, listen, I think a lot of that's going to happen, but it's still going to take a while to go throughout the entire economy. Right. Up till now, I would say that's been probably in our more densely populated uh, and richer areas. However, I would tell you this, guys. I was, as you all know, I was in Knoxville, Tennessee earlier this week uh, making a presentation to a group up there. And on the way back, and I took my lovely bride with me. A oh, little trip. Nice. There you yeah. have it. Uh, just what everyone, everyone wants to do, go to, to Tennessee. Knoxville, but it was actually pretty nice. I haven't really never been there before, but regardless, coming back yesterday, sort of a late lunch. I'm getting hangry, best getting hangry. Where can we eat? And we're outside of Cleveland, Tennessee. And so we pull in. What's here at this exit? Taco Bell. All right. I have not eaten at Taco Bell. When I say years, I mean years. Three three years, maybe four years, I have not been inside a Taco Bell. So I go inside the Taco Bell, and there are a couple, a couple of construction guys using the kiosk right in front. There's really no one behind the cash register, and I don't even know what they serve anymore. I mean, I know it's tacos and burritos, but I don't know what the what the combo is, whether or not I can get chicken. I, I don't know any of it. So I'm behind these guys. They're taking forever. All of a sudden, some woman comes up from back behind wherever back there and starts taking Beth's order, and Beth goes, come on over here. And she orders. She gets the same thing. She always apparently likes to go to Taco Bell. And uh, <laughs> she goes, what are you, you going to have? And I'm looking at the, at the counter. I don't know what I'm going to get. And the woman goes, what would you like? She asked me a second time. And then Beth goes, come on, and order. Let's order something. Did they not have the menu up on Well, they that? did, but I didn't know what the hell it was. I mean, so I just went, okay, I'll take number three. And the thing is, 
I didn't like the self-service kiosk aspect of that because I don't know what I'm looking at. You know, and so no one's there to tell me anything about it. But even so, that's going to be what people are going to have moving forward. It's just more and more self-service kiosk, which is good. Uh, I guess ultimately, you, you know that your order's probably not going to get screwed up. There's less uh, chance for uh, human error, and it's ultimately going to be less expensive for the franchisee. Sam, your thoughts? I, I completely agree. I think that frictional employment is something we're going to continue yeah. to see more and more of. And definitely in those higher, more dense areas with higher real estate costs and all that stuff are going to be the first areas that I think you see that and have seen that already. But I think the these companies tightening up are, are kind of tightening up their budget like anyone does when you things are going to be rocky going forward. Mm-hmm. There's volatility. I mean, everybody has their predictions of what this year and next year is going to look like. Higher rates clearly have yeah. an impact, all that stuff. The natural thing to do for an individual and a company is to kind of tighten up your budget when you don't know what's going to happen over the next couple right. months, quarters, even years. And so even if you are still expecting to be doing pretty well this back half of this year it makes sense it's prudent to go ahead and tighten up the budget uh you know cut costs where you can whether that's people for a lot of more tech companies that was the biggest thing but you're even seeing other companies like amazon cut back on investments in real estate and, Mm -hmm. and what have you and if anything i think it speaks to mcdonald's i mean they they are doing well you know they're not doing this as a reaction to you know, doing poorly, it's proactive. And I think, you know, they, they were looking or looking at the article that I sent y'all, they said that um, last year they reported sell, sales growth of 10.9%. I just can't believe that. I know, but that's of uh, stores that had been open at least 13 months. And then the company is still planning to open 1,900 new restaurants throughout the world in 2023. And I think that's been the case, though. I mean, that is as surprising as that is. I mean, that's not, I don't think, too abnormal for what we've seen. A lot of companies are are tightening up the budget and still doing pretty well. Well, the thing thing about it is if you're handling an income statement and you have to, I mean, you obviously want to keep a certain level of profitability and you can't predict your revenue. You can't control your revenue anywhere near the same way that you can control your expenditures. Right. So if if your revenue has been growing Let's say in 2021, when the economy grew 5.6%, if your if your revenue has been growing at let's say a five percent rate, and all of a sudden you're going, okay, I've, I'm forecasting revenue to tick down two three percent, or I just don't even know, but I don't think it's going to keep growing that same rate. Your only way to maintain your profit margins, Courtney, is either stabilize your costs or start to cut them. Mm-hmm. And for most companies, really, with the exception of people that just buy up a bunch of real estate, but for most companies. Really, a huge line item is going to be that uh, employee um, employee related cost. And yeah. So that's when people start getting the axe. Is when companies don't feel as as buoyant or as sanguine about their uh, revenue uh, possibilities moving forward. And, and it's not hard to imagine how many companies were positioned over the last ten years of essentially zero lower bound interest rates and free money. And yeah. I mean strong growth for the most part, yeah. especially in 21, to be positioned. I mean, it and made sense. Even nationally, you had around 2.2%. Everyone's worried about the, the devil coming to dinner. Right, right. But the, you were incentivized, and you almost had to go into this full growth yeah. mode, I mean, to, to keep up with competition. Now, Courtney, you, you have, uh, you're very fascinated with the McDonald's story. Yes. Uh, how often do you take your, you and the uh, minivan full of kids uh, go into the MCD? I refuse to eat McDonald's. <laughs> what about your kids? I will not take them to McDonald's. Oh, that's sad. I know. Every kid loved McDonald's. I know. I, I have not eaten McDonald's in over 10 years. So I'm not a good case scenario and for that. you probably have never eaten McDonald's. Oh, I loved McDonald's growing up. That's why I feel bad for your kids, Courtney. I did you love it growing up. I just, I don't. And you know what? Honestly, I don't think that the um, health probably is that much worse than Chick-fil-A, but we probably go into Chick-fil-A. It's not any every worse. Other week. Yeah, every other week. It's fried yeah. food. Yeah, I just, I don't. Be better. I don't honestly. like, um, I don't like McDonald's. I don't know. It's um, it's pretty good. Yeah, and the thing about it is, I, I do have to say, since we were talking about McDonald's quite quite so much, we don't make a market in the stock, and I I don't own any directly. Uh, I don't think you do. And no. I don't think Courtney does. So it's no. we, we're not so we're not we're not really breaking any rules here. But the truth is, I got to tell you, Courtney, I'm going to take issue with what you had to say. Well, I don't like 
eating at McDonald's all that often. There's something pretty tasty about McDonald's French fries, and I think you are really doing your children a grave disservice by not allowing them to get some uh, Mc deliciousness McDonald's French fries periodically. What do you think about that? I mean, that you have a right to your opinion, John. Um, <laughs> and if my husband wants to take them, he can, but I do not take them. I do find it interesting that they have 150,000 employees that the company with the company owned locations 70 percent of those are outside of the continental u.s yeah that is a lot outside of the u.s well the thing is that it does make sense to me because that way it's easier to maintain corporate consistency yeah in my estimation okay. you know if the headquarters is in illinois for at least a little while longer um, it's harder to maintain consistency in even in New Zealand than it would be down in Indianapolis if you catch my drift. So I, I, I completely do understand that. But kind of going back to just job cuts in general, and you know the McDonald's recently announced uh, recent announcement is just one of many. Sam, you might remember back in 2020, I used to go to a website called DailyJobCuts.com. Uh -huh. I used to go there every morning, and it just be who's cutting what when, who's cutting what when. From and everything, it's just, it's just mm -hmm. everything, and it's just headlines after headlines after headlines. And then in 2021, 2022, I really kind of quit going there there's no because heat. there was no news, you know. And then recently, I'd say really over about the last four to six weeks, it started to tick back up a little bit. And here we are talking uh, first week in April of 2023, nowhere near to what we were seeing in 2020. Not not even going to make that comparison, right. but we are seeing, or I am seeing, more businesses laying off people, more business closures, mom and pop stores, all that. And the truth is, a lot of them seem to be in the Northwest, Upper Midwest, and then also um, the, the North, did I say Northeast? No. Okay, Northeast, I meant to say Northeast and not Northwest, and Upper Midwest. Midwest like, and yeah, Northeast. And so a preponderance of them seem to be up there as opposed to being sort of in the higher growth areas where we've seen really since the pandemic, sort of the Texas and the, and the Southeast and Florida and what have you. I'm not seeing a lot of business closures there. It's from those sort of slower growth states. That's not surprising though. No, I agree. I guess, you know, when we had talked about this being specific to the tech industry and where we didn't think it was necessarily indicative of larger layoffs or, uh, among all industries right i mean now seeing that it's going into amazon and walmart and the mcdonald's whatever i mean do you think this is kind of on the forefront of well, larger layoffs to come I, I think you have to compare it to the amount look at the charts of these companies and the employees they had two years ago and right. i won't pick on any specific one but if you pull up pretty much any high growth company over the last couple years to the last decade they're still significantly higher than they were two years ago, the amount of jobs they have, the amount of employees they have. So it, it's it's getting back to maybe a little sense of normalcy versus, you know, drastically slashing jobs. And a lot of times these numbers sound big, a couple thousand jobs here and there. And while that is a, a lot of people losing their jobs, the percentage for these companies, oftentimes it's less than 1%, 2% of the overall yeah. employee. And the thing is, even the Federal Reserve has talked about the unemployment rate ticking back up over 4% or what have you, 4.1, 4.2, right. I think Chairman Bell has said on a number of occasions, and maybe it goes to 4.4, 4.5. And that seems like we're being kind of callous because, hey, we're talking about low percentages here. Obviously, those are jobs, those are paychecks, that's food on the table, clothes on the back, all that type of stuff. I'm not trying to be cavalier about it, but at the same time, you know, when we take a look at an unemployment rate of 4.4, 4.5%, not so long ago, that was considered pretty full employment, right. you know, and that's that's uh, even so that's going to be quite possibly literally millions of jobs that are going to be shed. And so we are going to see that happen. It's going to be painful for a lot of people, uh, but we will see companies sort of right size their uh, their employees uh, or, or, or their staffs. And it's going to be those people that built in those much higher than uh, normal growth levels that they saw in 2021 and 2020. Yeah, those that were over their skis. Which, yeah, without yeah. a doubt. So, you know, 
I don't know, if, Courtney, if we'd answered any of your concerns about McDonald's, but it's kind of confusing to me now. <laughs> I don't now. know why she's concerned. You know, well, yeah, okay. she doesn't even like McDonald's. And she's sending me emails about McDonald's, talking about, take a look at this, see what McDonald's is doing. They're no, cutting all these people is. and all that stuff. I'm just saying I mean, it's, it it's sounds expanding like she's beyond the tech industry. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds making like, the point of. sounds like you were pretty happy about all these people at McDonald's, aren't right? you? No, not at all. We'd never cold support hearted. that. Cold, cold-hearted Courtney. Thanks, guys. You like that? Yeah. Is that your, that you like your new nickname? C H C. I don't know. What do you think? I like so? it. Yeah, I like it too. Huh. Well, guys, we always love to hear from you all. So if you have any comments or questions, please by all means let us know. You can always reach us uh, by sending us an email at trading perspectives at hookworth.com, or you can leave us a review on the podcast out of your choice. As always, you can interestingly enough i'm really butchering this here today and i'm sorry about this you can always go to our website oakworth.com take a look underneath the thought leadership tab and find all kinds of exciting information sam please quit looking at me like i am a moron i'll I'll go ahead and wrap it up that's all i have yeah i don't have anything else either john i apparently have a lot of problems but that's all i've got to get to y'all take care